तिकडे जाऊन येतो ना बरोबर
नाही निरंतर कोरडे अंतर भावावे माझे मी तुपण गेले नाही देवा माझे मी तुपण गेले नाही देवा काय करू ठेवा संचिता श्री गणेशाय नम ओम श्री सरस्वत नम ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम शुका सारिखे पूर्ण वैराग्य जासे वशिष्ठा परिज्ञान योगेश्वरास कवि वाल्मीका सारिका मान्य सा नमस्कार माझा सद्गुरु रामदास नमस्कार माझा सद्गुरु रामदास जय जय रघुवीर समर्थ ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू वी हॅव इन सीन दिस विवेक अँड वैराग्य अँड ऑन द सेव्हन सेक्शन वी सॉ the importance of dispassion and then uh, we took one surprise this is just a quick summary uh, listen uh, so we took the surprise test about dispassion is it a property of a mind or a body or what and we concluded that dispassion is a property of mind and we are so fortunate today that our guest speaker diligently practiced this what was described in the starting bhajan she this is one bhajan but then lizen is the living example of that bhajan and she comes to us she is joining us from mainland china she is a graduate of the 7th batch of vedanta course i had a great fortune to be co student with her and we probably were the two extremes of the end uh, but in terms of efforts put in uh, because when lizen came to the course she wrote like this which most westerners would write like this but eventually she learned sanskrit alphabet and wrote in full script and eventually she could she actually her group won the competition of we had the competition of bhagavata 
what topics are said where. And this is not from Bhagavata, but this is from our uh, early morning chanting class. And her, after her group one, I went and saw her notebook. It was like a black pearls on a white paper. So without any further ado, Lizen, she has done PhD in horticulture and she is practicing Vedanta after returning to mainland China. She is studying, she is intensely, currently she is intensely studying Shankaracharya's one book called as Sarva Vedanta Sara Sangraha on which our Acharya have, has written Sanskrit into Sanskrit commentary. So we, uh, we I, I study with Liz in, uh, in another class where we meet uh, regularly. So listen, this is our small group of people. Swami Tejamanandaji uh, advice uh, asked me to do this Samartha Ramadas Pravachan in Marathi because the book is written in Marathi. So this is the group. So this is a very shy group of people. They don't generally talk, but you can ask them questions. Uh, I'm going to request them all, especially today, to put on your cameras. That way, the thing is when you have your camera on, especially guest speaker, they resonate well. Uh, uh, and uh, we get the cross feeling is always on and then that rejoice. And we, the reason is we'll, we'll be more benefited from listen. So we were discussing what topic would listen speak on. And then this vairagya, this dispassion, see, even for us, who have lived in U.S. for 15, 20, 30 years, when we go to India, Bharat, we need a lot of dispassion to stay there. And now, listen, she stayed like Devata in the ashram. And, and she is the most qualified person to tell us about Manashuddhi. So listen, Thank you for accepting our invitation and all yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm here. I just want to, uh, I am do not do the PhD. I just do the master of the culture and then, uh, and then went to India for spiritual seeking. Um, so, and now I'm working on the yoga shala and for some a translation, uh, reading book and something related to Sanskrit and teaching Sanskrit and yoga sutra in yoga shala. So it's this kind of living support me to work in this path, especially in China. And so, I will share some thoughts on Chitta Shuti. It's my favorite uh, topic because I benefit this uh, from this very much. I will speak about this on uh, by five W. First is what's impurities of mind. We know I think of you a uh, sincere seeker, a sincere seeker in Vedanta. So you may know six enemies. And first is karma, desire, and then growth, uh, anger, and then low greed, and then mm, mother, arrogant, uh, pride, what I have, and I'm very great, or something like that. And the last one is mastodium, jealousy. And these six enemies, okay, they can have many sons or daughters, and you may not know and once I ask some students, what's your enemy inside? And they look at these six enemies. They say, I don't have these six enemies. And I think I'm good. So at that time, I am thinking, maybe because we don't know what we have inside or we don't turn our mind inside. So we don't see the six enemies here. So we think we are fight, we are our living are fight. But actually, when we turn inside, we can see the thought inside and not so uh, pleased with us. 
And so we are, our topic is Chitta Shakti. So what's Chitta Shakti? Is that we, somebody, is talk about in Bhagavad, uh, no, in Gita, 16th chapter, and a lot of uh, qualities we need, and Lord Krishna want us to have. Some of them are abhayam, fearless, and some uh, abide in wisdom, and uh, shakti vivahara, a pure subject living, and some um, shama, dhamma, Okay, so we know the first of you. Uh, what's impurity of mind? And then we turn to purity of mind. Good quality is the purity we want and the um, impurity we don't want because actually even we don't know what self-knowledge. This purity of mind we also need. Okay, the second is from what this impurity have come. Because our aim or our goal is to remove all this impurity. So firstly, we have to know where they live, where they dwell on. Once we know their origin, we know how to um, attack them like enemies. Because they are our enemies, we know we have to know where they are and what they are, who they are. So, uh, generally, in our modern virtual education, they tell us what our impurities are, and we have to remove them. But they don't tell us their origin. What's their origin? Where they come from? And Vedanta tells us their ultimate father or uh, the source is Avidya. So the biggest enemy actually is not the six enemies, is Avidya. Uh, ignorance of our spiritual uh, nature or our ultimate nature. So only Vedanta tell us. And so they, uh, this Avidya uh, cover our true nature and it also misguide us and let us identify what we are not and then have those six enemies. Okay, now we know where they, uh, where are they from and then what they do, what these enemies do, we have to know their activities so that we can uh, have a clear idea how to attack them. So, okay, those six enemies, they create sorrow and affliction and finitude and something we don't like and something people don't like. So, uh, at social level, at the nation level, at the glo uh, global level, all this they can, we can fight their, uh, their, the track. And for a seeker, and actually for me, in my opinion, uh, experience is that the more we are harder you invoke, and in white, and the more impurity you, you will have. It's not that once you get the self knowledge, you will have total purity of mind. It's not like that. Because it's because God's grace and God's grace, we get the knowledge. It's, our quality is only small, small, small part of that. If we get the knowledge, somehow by God's grace and God's grace. After that, if, if we don't continuously to do the purification process, our knowledge will get, we not, we not get firm. And again, we fall into the so-called samsara. It's my experience. Because Listen, now I... Listen, there is a question here. Would you mind 
uh, taking question. Uh, the question here is, so someone has sent the question, How? what is a good way to recognize impurity in my mind? That's the question. Okay, my okay. My way is to turn in wall and then uh, what and then see the what's inside in the mind. And then once you recognize what is good, and then you know what is not good. Like uh, what I'm thinking the the example I like is the fake uh the note, the note we use for my things, the note, like the note, uh, a piece of like a piece of paper that note. If you in China, you know, in China there's a lot of fake notes. People want to uh you know do some uh profit from that. Once you know yeah the currency yeah note thank you the currency note if you know the uh the real currency note and then you because the false currency note have many forms and uh, you know the people are very smart they can know and they can make the false currency note exactly uh not exactly but you know 90 percent is that 90 percent real with the um, like the real currency note but once you know what's real you can know what's unreal and for me kimonam i kimonam as prescribed by acharya in sandimani and it helped a lot because first you have to close or uh, shut your mouth and then see inside once you don't speak you can see inside once you speak you look outside so it's my simple way to to recognize impurity and also see what do you what do you what do um, you don't like what is present in people and then you note that is impurity. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I will continue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. The Fourth W is for what? This purity is for what? We generally make uh, one purity of mind, but we don't know for what. Actually, this happened in China in the spiritual um, field. Um, we make the start, we know satana and satya. And actually, Vedanta told, tell me, um, Purification of mind is only a satana, not a satya. The satya is, uh, okay, let's say we have two projects in life. One is chitta shuti and another is samyak jnana. So chitta shuti actually is a step, uh, storm for the first storm for the samyak jnana. Samyak jnana is the uh, clear understanding of ourselves means clear uh, self-knowledge. So Chitta Shuti is Satanam and the Samyakyanam is Satya. But actually in China, this is mm, the Samyak they don't know. And they make the Samyakyanam they don't know. And they make uh, the all Satanas uh, as the Satya. They spend a lot of money and time and make this Satana as their goal. And and the thing is the whole, and they don't know their real nature. And because of this, they make the spiritual practice as a um, means for profit, for, for material wealth. This very popular and universal in China. We only a few satgan to know what's their goal. And I will give an example, like, we drink water. We drink water, we use a glass or cup for drinking water. And the cup is the satana. And the water and the water is the uh, the clean 
quenching first is the satya, the gold, and the water also the mean. Actually, water is like self knowledge, and the glass is the our mind. We need a clean glass to drink the water. We don't. Uh, if we are very first, firstly, we don't mind the shape of the cup, uh, the color and um, the blend of the cup. Even outside is very have some dirt. We don't mind because we, we want water. We want we want to quen quench the first. So we need a clean mind. So the chitta shuti is for that purpose for to holding um to holding the clean water and quench the first. So desire for liberation is sat satya, the goal, the end, quenching the first. And the self-knowledge is the water, clean water. And the uh shuti is the cup, clean cup. So our Aim is to clean the mind and then for higher purpose, that is liberation. So, but in Vedanta, we say purification of the mind, we have the six enemy, but if we don't uh, destroy the, you know, the ultimate enemy, meaning avidya, actually there is not Chitta Shuti is the is not the fulfillment of the Chitta Shuti. So we we need self knowledge. So now we come to because of this we come to by what the fifth W by what by what we can gain this Chitta Shuti, and then by what uh, we can achieve our goal. Chitta Shuti is a satana and revelation is a satya. But when we come to, I want Chitta Shuti, and now Chitta Shuti becomes a satya, the gold. And what's the satana for Chitta Shuti? This satana are uh, prescribed in Veda, and of you know, because you are from India, from the Indian culture, you know better than me. I know it's from the Gita and the uh, Obanisha and what our Dalia want us to have. So in Gita, the 13th chapter, exactly in 13th chapter, it describe, uh, describe the qualification we need to have. Uh, um, and then the Samit Nyanam also described. So the 14th chapter is the very good task we can study and know. And so actually these all tests and the culture um, invader, uh, you say, you call it sa. Uh, Sanadana Parama. And actually, because I'm still new to India culture, and this Sanadana, what I learned from Ajalia, from Sandipani, is all the tests we know, and then the, what Ajalia want us to do. So I don't have too much idea about them. Details or very sharp uh, sub. Uh, sublims of the Indian culture. Actually, you know better than me. Um, and also, I want to add something about for what. For what reason we want Chitta Shakti? Two reasons. One is to gain the liberation, the knowledge. For liberation, we need self knowledge. And then, and then, after knowledge, we have to keep this knowledge firm. Actually, this after afterward is the many many you know is a challenge for some sitaka seeker sitaka especially in my case because I'm 
I think many sadhaka like me are facing such challenge because we get knowledge from uh, Guru and then we're supposed to withdraw from the world. But actually, this withdrawal from the world depends on the environment we, we are in and um, the cultural background. Like many uh, Indian uh, batch mate seeker, they can stay in ashram. They can find a place where they can get the support and do the teaching. But for, but for me, I need to work and then there's no uh, 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 spiritual place for me to stay without working and teaching. So I have to work. And because this is working, I have to face them, you know, make more money or then uh, devote more time in study. This is a conflict. So, uh, you know, Arvind uncle said, I have a lot of well here. No, no, you know, after coming coming back working, actually, I see a lot of low power here, a lot of uh, struggle. So I have well here, withdraw from the work field and then devote more time, total time, my living in study or teaching. And then, no, actually, this is what seeker facing. It's very difficult. What I get is the strength from the teaching and our Guru's support and, you know, the, the Sadhaka's uh, support. Without this, I just go back to the old living style and maybe just get married and then, yeah, yeah. you know, live uh, like normal people. No difference uh, like what I am. I was before, but I don't want that. Because I know why I go, went to India and why I get this knowledge and why I did not escape uh, did not escape from the Sandipani during the course because a lot of challenges there. Learning Sanskrit is a challenge and uh, the food is a challenge. And you know, I don't know this finite notion is also a challenge. So I know. I stayed there for two years, completed course, not escape from any class is, uh, except the, uh, you know, have the uh, uh, disease. So I know God want me to walk in this path. So I get the strength from the, the daily study, daily sadhana, and keep going. So. Because of this, Arvin uncle invited me to share some thoughts on this. So thank you, uncle. So, and I, I think we still have, let me, give me one minute to, to speak Actually, about. Isn't there two, two questions somebody okay. has sent on, okay. on your Please. topic? You mentioned there are many ways of Chitta Shuddhi in, in our two-year course you learned. Hmm. So out of which, which is your favorite one? Which one did you like? Like what out of different disciplines, what different things they taught in the ashram, which one, which method you like most for Chitta Shuddhi? That's the first question. Okay. Which sadhana I like most and I practice most in Sandipani? is chanting, uh, very chanting. And I like the most because one reason is I don't know Sanskrit. And so I, I want to catch the catch up. So Ajaria said, the more you is, is, is post yourself into the Sanskrit environment, you can get more improvement. So I chant, I chant, I chant. I make myself as a child and learn I don't know, and then I ask people, and I don't know how to chant, I record, I listen. This become my satana. Firstly, how they become my satana, and I gave the Chitta Shuti. Firstly, it removed my finitude. Not fighting you uh, as, um, you know, jila, but finitude that I don't know, I don't want to learn, because, you know, see people, how they are smart. Uh, 
how smart they are. They are Indian and they know and they don't even need to like study like me so hard. You know, I am from zero, so like that. So it destroyed this uh, finitude. And second is it helped me to develop the courage to speak in public. Arvin Angle knows I I am no I don't I did not want to speak in public. They pushed me, but actually I know my English is not so well, my Sanskrit is not so not so well. And I I cannot uh you know refer to some quotation, Upanishad quotation, Gita quotation in the five minutes talk and see how people they how how great they are. They can call the quotation. And because of that, I don't speak too much in the in the in the course because of this reason. And but it helped me, and also it helped me. This samskara helped me to to practice uh, speaking speech here. Because of that experience, now I can, you know, share teach Vedanta. Yeah, so Red okay. Chanting is my favorite. Okay. And uh, second now, favorite, Maunam. Mo yeah. Maunam. Maunam, yes, oh. Maunam. Yeah. Okay, now Meenakshita, you have a question. You can go unmute yourself and ask. I thought you raised your hand. Yeah, yeah, no, please. I, I just wanted to admire you. Um, you are very adventurous to go to another country and learn completely different culture, a different language and different concepts, completely different concepts and try to learn them with extra work and perseverance. I admire you for that. My hat's off to you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Priyanka. Priyanka also has a question. Yeah, Hari, really, Hari. really wonderful uh, story. Uh, like to see your experience and your following your your you know what you have done. Like it's amazing, and uh, I really uh, liked your ex uh, example of the currency, the fake currency. How to compare a real currency with fake currency? So, uh, like, but that that is to determine. Like, same logic applies to determining what our impurities are. So, in that case, when there is avidya, then the nature is not known. So, what do we compare it with? Is what I was thinking. Hmm. Oh, Guruji give a lot ideas to to understand this. Like. Uh, a glass in my uh, aware and I don't know and then I search my glass and then some people remind me oh your glass is you are wearing like that and not another example is the key you know would we leave the house and put the key in my pocket that when I am Early to come back to the house and have a busy, you know, business. And I searching my, I'm, I was searching my key, but I don't know where they are. Maybe I live in the office. And then I call my, 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 my family and they asked me to search in a pocket. Oh, it's in my pocket, like that. So actually our nature is there, but we don't know and we need somebody to remind us this somebody is guru is our scripture we need to seek help from them so these are two examples guruji give there's you don't mind having that question answer right because there are two more I questions don't mind. Reason. okay don't the mind. one question here is about the dispassion. They said, okay, what they want to know is in China, while you are studying, uh, living, grew up there, so you must have liked some things and you are pretty successful in getting masters. Mm -hmm. But at what stage you got that glimpse that, ah, this Vedanta gave me is giving me joy. I want to study it more. So what kind of experience was that that uh, that this is vedanta 
I I want to know more about it. So how how, how that transformation happened and you mm -hmm. took that big jump to study two years. Okay, the two two jump. Okay, two jump. First one is I when I choose the course, I don't know what's the what's Vedanta, what's the Sanskrit and what's the Southwest of Burma. All this comes that I heard is from the course. Uh, because but before that I'm I oh okay I studied I, I I was in horticulture uh horticulture subject but uh when I was a freshman I got to know the psychology and then I went to learn psychology uh, from people and then I slowly slowly the spiritual seek is so and uh, glow. And then I want to know more about psychology and even want to make it as my profession. Profession, um, But something, uh, uh, some re because of some reason, I do, did not choose the psychology as my subject. And then I continue my, my horticulture study. And then I have I got the chance to uni uh, USA to do the stage stage uh, visiting scholar and at uh, from there I learned uh, meditation and then after coming back I want to do PhD in USA for horticulture but after that two time I have to work and then study and I am time so I am asking myself what I want. Do I really want a green car or living in American or do research? No, it's not what I want. So I want a guru or I want a teacher. I want a person to guide me in this path because I saw a lot of people, they spent a lot of money in the spiritual course, but they still did not uh, make it as their whole life, whole, the goal of life. So I don't want that. I want a systematic study and want a person to guide me. So I, I studied, so I choose Vedanta, but I don't know Vedanta was what it is. I know of oh, two years can stay in another country to change my profession. Okay, just like that. So I went there and, and start uh, the journey. And this is the first time. Uh, the second is after the course. After the course, why I can still consistently study and or stick in this path because this course, I get a lot of Viveka. This Viveka helped me to uh, this thing, uh, to you know this thing was was real and unreal in the society. What I see because you continually listen our Ajarias teaching, you can have, use your eyes to see what people do, what they get. So actually, our Ajaria teach us, you don't need to experience a lot by yourself. You can dis discriminate the real and unreal, the eternal and uh, you know, the indeterminate, eternal, from people's experience, from the society. This is what I learned. Because I see many people walk the path I, I have walked before, but they still did not get the real knowledge. I only to uh, spend two years and get the whole idea of Indian culture and uh, the highest knowledge. So this is what I want. And also I see a lot of solo people have and they don't have idea how to solve it. And people have a lot of money, but they still have, you know, people sick in at home and they still have the desire, they speak uh, the Wailagia, they speak the spiritual, uh, you know, knowledge, but they don't have Wailagia. This, so this helped me to, to stick in this path because this path is really, really good. It may not give me a lot of 
material wealth, but at least it gives me spiritual wealth and help me to walk forward without solo. Hmm. So listen, if I if you allow me, because there is some other question of saying what are the specific examples of your difficulties, and one I will share because I personally experienced this with Lizen. See, okay. we we used we had we were given various duties, and for six seven months, maybe a year, eight ten months, I was given a duty of distributing snacks and fruits in the afternoon, three or four o'clock, to all Brahmacharya. And Lee Zen was the one of the very few Brahmachari students used to come. See, others, everybody used to come will say, in which bowl there is more snack, which fruit is bigger, which fruits look fruit looks nice. So they'll touch three, four, then select one, or whatever, with different way. She was the one of the few people would come. First, her eyes fell on whichever fruit, she'll pick that up and go without making eye contact. Whatever first bowl, she'll pick up and go. Uh, can I have one more or bigger or no questions? So this is the first small, small step of Vairagya and Maunam that I learned from her. That <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> some used to wait till the end because there are always some extra fruits remaining. And she would just, there was a special table among 30, 35 tables. There's two or three tables reserved for people to eat in Maunam. Lizen is to sit there. <laughs> so there's so much to learn. She need not speak everything, but just looking and watching her behavior was inspiration to me. Yeah, uh, Marathe Kaka, Sangha. Yeah, there's one more question to you, Lizen. Yeah, go ahead. You know, you are unmute yourself. Unmute. Yeah. Ah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Linsen, uh, how receptive are your uh, family, your friends, and neighbors to your ideas of Vedanta? Are you able to impart knowledge to them, or are they very resistant? Oh, okay. I, because I listened to our Ajaria, what he said is, you. Uh, you, you do not speak Vedanta to your family, to your friend. At least they ask you. This knowledge is for you, it's not for them. And you you uh you don't think you are helping people because once you help yourself, people can get the you know the influence by you. So I stick into this. Uh, instruction. So, because also it's not like Indian or American people accept India culture so openly. Here, I just live my way. Like, like I will share some some experience with you. What and see what you can uh, think about. I the first year I. At the end of the course, I went home and they welcomed me warmly, you know. Oh, my daughter come come back and I cooked a lot of food for her. You know, the meat and you know, the meat and some and in vegetarian foods. Finally that. Uh, and then we have conflict of because of this. And also I live in the house for nearly one year because of wind and I want to study more review. And my mother always want me to eat meat because he thinks uh, new uh, I can become bigger and look uh, well uh, not so skin. And she just put some meat in the soap and bring it out before bring it to me. I found that, so I, you know, at that time I was very strict in my diet, so I just vomit, you know, vomit. So nearly one year, we have a lot of cases, like conflict about this food, and they don't accept that. So I don't force them to, to accept this. I just follow my way. 
and then I I I work after one year now mm -hmm. nearly two years. I also follow the vegetarian food uh, yes. diet, and then I I look well, healthy, and then when I went home, they look oh my daughter because vegetarian food still uh, alive. So they also accept this. And so last time I went home, they cook the days vegetarian food for me. And also they eat, they don't buy the new meat. So at that time I know they accept my way of living. This is the first point. The second point is at the first, at the beginning, they don't accept what I learned. Then they don't accept the rebirth and they don't accept the samsara, uh, the samsara, samsara, and they don't accept the philosophy. They think philosophy cannot make money, cannot make a living. So I study at home, but they just urge me to go to work and like that. So a lot of struggle, conflict at that time, even after the knowledge see a seeker, after the knowledge still have the conflict with family. It's my, you know, real experience. After that, I I'm I went I go to work and make money and then teach Sanskrit, find a chance to teach Sanskrit and and because of this, they know oh teaching Sanskrit can also make a living. <laughs> you know. Still, they accept my 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 you know my interesting. So because of this, they may see the some some result they can see, they can feel. So they accept accept. So I don't force people to accept what what I learn. I just share in the science class. Medanta slowly a little a little. So this nice but they just listen. They want to know more. Right now. Nice. Okay. Very good. One more question by Anushka Deshmukh. So we the camera on Kara and in each other. One. One question is there. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah please. Anushka. Huh. Anushka, which are a person? Now the camera on. On Kerala, hot nasil ta salil vichar. Yeah. Yes. Namaste. I admire your passion and uh, love for Indian culture, and I am also from your field, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, Delhi. Mm -hmm. I have been there. there. So, uh, namaste to you. And uh, there is there was no as such any question. Just to say you namaste and namaste to your passion. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Okay. Priyanka. Priyanka. I wanted to ask the difficulty that it's a challenge that you had to like even understand the script, the to understand the scriptures, like all the learning. Did it make it more uh, was that did that make it more ch the challenge itself made your desire to learn uh, more intense? Like was like the the desire for um, seeking knowledge did it become yeah. more intense because you had to like the challenge was also a lot higher because I wonder if people take it for granted when you already understand the meaning of certain words then you don't think so much about it because I really appreciated how you are able to uh, put your thoughts together in in such a very coherent manner. And the, uh, the meaning is so, uh, like, I, I, f I felt that you have understood the whole meaning, like you ha you live that, okay? Oh, um, you know, a child, when a child learns Sanskrit, they are learning walking. He, at first, he doesn't know how to walk, but at the help of the parent, slowly and with the help of, of the, some chair and some tool, he slowly, slowly learn how to walk. And even though many times he falls, but he get up again, stand again, and then walk. This is what, uh, this is like what our Italian 
working with us or we follow him or he you know feed us you know you know um Sanskrit is uh, challenging and especially the Indian culture is uh you know it's a challenge and the Indian food is challenge all times come to me but you know at every point people helped me so I am not alone and I'm not um uh helpless I have helped her and you know Ajalia asked many people to help me Sanskrit and food and you know clothes everything they help me so I'm not alone and I can also I learn how to seek help because people smarter than you they are there learn from them and not jealousy and I told me if I work hard I can be like them so so I just make myself as a child a child is not shape in learning it's not fear in falling so that's what I learned firstly make yourself small and then you learn and then you walk with Ajalia. Absolutely, you have to walk with Ajalia and listen what he has said and put in my mind and, and internalize means like a coffee and the sugar. You have coffee and sugar, you have to stir them and drink them. If you don't drink, you still be a like like what I was before so walk with Ajalia believe him and then believe yourself and believe your 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 uh, your fellow seeker yeah just to give you two examples if listen if you would allow me yes to learning sans learning sanskrit priyanka they first put us in three groups those who don't know alphabets, then those who are okay, like Marathi people, as they know Devanagari script. And then the third group was the highest, those who, those who knew the uh, grammar and everything. So Lisa was, of course, in the group three in the beginning. Then she came to group two, and then she went to most advanced group, in group one, Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. She went throughout the core, she wore sari. And perfect way to wearing sari, she is to help do all her uh, serving, serving food, everything in sari. So she just immerse in the culture. So that she tried what she said like child, not afraid. So she did that. So as I as I mentioned to you, her little things were inspiration for person who is willing to observe and pick. So for me, she was the uh, inspiration in many ways. Maunam, she would be in strict Maunam. Uh, every Tuesday, we had Maunam. And then, yes. And then, some of us had some other duties which would require to speak. For example, in the beginning, I had duty to assign people for doing Arati. So I remember one instance, like, I had to go and ask them, are you willing to do the Arati? And then I remember one time, Lizan showed me her hand. On her hand, it was written, Maunam. <laughs> I, I used to take uh, advantage of my uh, thing. I said, oh, I'm, I'm not talking other things. I'm asking her to do her thing. Then talk, you know, take uh, advantage, misadvantage of things. So, but then Lizan showed me like this. And it was written, Maunam. So much to learn. Yeah. Uh, Minakshi, you have a question. Yeah. I like to ask you, Miss Lizen, how did you get interested in Vedanta? What, what uh, interest, what made you go there and learn Vedanta? Oh, that's what I have said. I don't know Vedanta before, but I just, uh, you know, the desire for for getting rid of the solo is what I want. Because there's a period I was very 
you know, depressed, in depressed. And I don't, I know what I don't want, but I don't know what I want. What I don't want is the sorrow and the uncertain, you know, uncertain future, the, you know, anxiety of, about the future. And I want to change the profession. So all this is what I want, but I don't know what I really want, but I want a people to guide me. So I want to learn in another country. So at that time I have choice in, you know, learning yoga in the yoga university and the Vedanga course. So which one give me, you know, quick reply? <laughs> Because at that time, I'm not sure which one will admit me. So which one give me reply and accept me. So I, I, so I just uh, go there. And because our Ajaria, Swami Bodhatma Nanda, I asked him, because at that time, I, I still, you know, I don't know which one I should choose. So I wrote to him what I can get from the course. Can I get a um, profession after the course? Mm -hmm. Can I teach or uh, make money? You know, I asked directly. And then he replied that you can get, uh, you know, spiritual, spiritual gains and you, you feel happy and you will feel freedom, something like that. And then, okay, at that time, I wrote to him, I will. I will go there. And but after that, you know, the mind is so, you know, so after that I still thinking about no, this philosophy cannot make money for me. So I hesitate. But one point I made is Satya. If you promise something to someone, you have to follow. You have to make it true. Because of this Satya, I go there. Not because something I I want because the subject, so I go there. And the two year experience told me your choice is 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 the you know is is the one you want, and you can get benefit from that. Okay. Yeah. So Lizen has she after this she is going to go to work because it is eight o'clock in the morning there. Yeah. So we we'll take we, one hour. We, We'll take one last question from Divya. So Divya, go ahead. That will be our last question. Yeah. Hi, listen. Hello. So I would like to ask you one question. Like, uh, so you studied Vedanta, Indian philosophy, all nice things. But what what philosophy in China or non-Indian philosophy you resonate with Indian philosophy or you liked it most? Like, which goes parallel to Indian philosophy or you, you like oh. it? Yeah. I got people in China. I would like to know that. Yeah, before that, I I learned some. I went to some Buddhism, Buddhism ashram, and because it's the place uh, open to people, and and I can, you know, just people like to go there, and also some Western, Western spiritual course alike. But I don't know where they are full of that flow. So I just follow people. What people introduce, I learn many things. So if comparing to Indian uh, philosophy, I think it's Buddhism, even though Buddhism also uh, from India. Yeah. Okay. Now to end this, I I want to request Lizen to share. Lizen, would you like to share your dialogue with Swami Tejaman and the when you said after the course when you learn that the new course was announced and you asked him about if you would like to about this course and what his reply was. Would you like to share that? You, uh, you asked whether you asked him if you could uh, uh, you mean uh, I asked uh, Guruji? Swami Tejima and the Guruji, you asked uh, him tell uh, tell them what did you what you asked and what he replied. Oh Okay, I I ask, hmm. I ask him when I stand in the you know Jagadishwar is uh you know 
the temple, I saw many people play to God. And I asked, I also play to God because I see people do, so I do. But what they speak to God and what I can speak to God and what is God? Uh, and do I have to believe in God? So I can, uh, so do I have to need to uh, have bhakti or believe in God? Because people in China, we don't believe in God, many people. So Guruji said, uh, you, okay, you just speak what you want to speak to God and then, you God, you made God as yourself. So you don't need to, you know, like people do believe in God, something like, uh, you know, have a religion or something like that. But you made the bhakti as the highest, devote yourself to self-realization. Because in, I think Guruji's idea is from uh, Viveka to the money. One bhakti is to the God have shaped personal lives, another is to the high self. High self is the God. So the high if self. I remember, is, if I remember correct, I think, listen, if I could just rephrase and see if I'm yeah, remembering correct, Guruji said, imagine God as your purest mind and have a dialogue with God with the Shankar Bhagavan, Jagadishwara, not as a God, but as your listens pure mind. And then make that pure mind as your colleague, as a friend. And then have a dialogue with him. Don't accept him as a God, but as a friend. And and tell tell everything to the Jagadishwara. See, see, from Arvind's uncle's sharing, I found that, you know, the person who experienced may not remember what he have said, what he have done, but the observer remember what he, what the people do. Actually, uncle, you know, what you said, many examples, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I love it. It, it requires a lot of courage, friends, to sit among 85, 90 young people in white to stand up and tell Guruji that this idea of Lord is new to me. I cannot accept Jagadishwara as a Lord. What sort of relationship I should have with Shankar Bhagwan? Uh, how should I look at the Murti? It requires a lot of courage and more so honesty. Uh, and when you are honest, the Guru is convinced that this fellow is going to do effort. Just superficially saying, Lord Bhagwan, like me, are many. <laughs> but those who really want to establish relation with Jagadeshwara are very few, like Lisa. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, well, really, one last question. Okay, you said thank you. Okay, you're just saying claps. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, we end on time. And then I really want to thank Lisa. Uh, so, after I know you have to go, Lisa. So, after the uh, ending prayer, please feel free to leave. I have some other instructions give it to the rest of the people, but then I'll say the ending prayer. Do you like yes. to lead ending prayer? We say Purna Madam. You can say. Yes. Go ahead. Chant. Om Purna Madam Purna Purna Madam Purna Purna Madam Purna Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha Hari Om Om Dasada. Thank you, Lizen. I truly yeah. appreciate you coming. Thank you. Yeah, and then I'll see you tomorrow in the class. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Hari Om. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you very much.